right, everybody, welcome. Uh, how are we doing this morning? Good. Good. All right. We're going to do something just to wake everybody up. Now, slight technical difficulties. Buddy, maybe you can do it. I don't think. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Bomber! <laughs> to be here, but no matter how much energy I have, I'm not going to be able to do that. And I hope you all woke up, and it's great to have you here. So, um, we're going to have a two-day event. Today is mostly uh, presentations. We're going to be talking about uh, test-driven development, continuous integration, continuous delivery, automated acceptance testing, and uh, writing solid code, dealing with legacy code. Uh, so it's a full day of presentations. We do plan to have an open space in the back. Um, if there's any topic you want to discuss, we will have on the back wall, in the back room, a place where you can uh, propose a topic and we'll have time slots and if people want to discuss that with you, um, you'll have mini sessions and discuss it. The speakers are going to be hanging out after each talk, so if you want to follow up with them on a specific topic or ask them anything else, um, that's the place to, to be. Um, tomorrow is the Global Day of Code Retreat. So, for those that are not familiar with that, it is a full day, alright? It's a full day of coding. So, you will need your laptop. We're going to be coding. We have tables in this room, and we'll be coding um, all day tomorrow. This is a global event, so there's going to be about 150 locations and about 30,000 developers coding all at the same time, pretty much solving um, the same problem. And we'll be practicing test-driven development. We'll be honing our skills and um, trying to improve uh, what we do. All right, so. The uh, quick schedule for today, uh, we're going to kick this <coughs> up right now, and then we're going to have a talk on software craftsmanship and agile engineering. Uh, Sam and Mike will cover uh, improving design through TDD. We're going to take a break, and then Steven's going to talk about continuous integration. And then um, at that point, we will have set up in the back the open space, so if any of you wants, want to join the open space, feel free. Um, and then at 11.45, Rebecca will talk about automated acceptance tests by uh, using specifications by example. Lunch is at 12.35. And during lunch, we will have a warm-up kata for tomorrow. So for those of you that are not familiar with that and you'd like to experience it, we will be running that uh, during lunch. At uh, 1.45, we continue in this space here. A uh, talk on continuous delivery. Um, 2.45, unindented code cannot possibly work. And we'll wrap this up with figuring out how we can do all this stuff with legacy applications. Um, and at 5, we're going to go across the street and have some drinks. 
So hopefully you can all join us. All right. Um, Wi-Fi is being reset. So this is the connection. It's an open connection. Right now, it's, there's some difficulty. We're going to fix that. This is our hashtag. It's working now. All right. So Wi-Fi is working now. And it's super fast. This is the hashtag if anybody wants to tweet the event. Um, let's see what else. Any questions before we get started? All right. You want to see the video one more time? Are we all awake? <laughs> Can everybody hear me or do I need to use a mic? In back, we're okay? All right. So, um, this conference is about agile engineering, and we're going to briefly do an introduction as to what, what that all is. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Fadi Stefan, for those of you that don't, don't know me. Um, I, I run the DC Software Craftsmanship User Group and the DC Scrum User Group. So if I don't get to chat with you today, I hope to see you soon at one of these user groups. We meet monthly, they're free, and we meet in uh, this space. The software craftsmanship user group is hands-on coding. The Scrum user group discusses um, the Scrum process. We have workshops, group discussions, and things like that. So hopefully I'll get to see many of you in the future as well. So I'm going to go back a little bit in history. 1991, this is at the Uppsala conference. Anybody know this, know this conference? It is Object-Oriented Programming Systems, Languages, and Applications Conference. Big name. Bruce Anderson uh, conducted a workshop at that conference called Towards a Software Architecture Handbook. And the idea was to get a group of software architects together and um, use their knowledge of their problems they were facing and come up with a small handbook uh, to share their experiences and help other software architects that are facing the same problem. So these, these four gentlemen were at that conference and they met at the conference and over the next couple of years they collaborated together to produce such a handbook. And what they came up with is a book called uh, Design Patterns. And it turned out to be much bigger than a handbook. And these four guys are now famously known as the Gang of Four. And the book is pretty much uh, the most influential book in computer science um, today. Everybody heard of this book? All right, great. We're off to a good start. So a couple of years later, same conference, 1998. Um, Bruce Anderson's conducting another <coughs> workshop called Software as a Studio Discipline. So in this workshop, we're discussing if software is a uh, careful blend of uh, art and discipline. Bruce McBreen was at that conference and was very inspired with what, what the discussions he heard. And over the next couple of years, he worked on producing this book called uh, Software Craftsmanship. So in the book, he basically said that um, software is part art, uh, part skill. And he came up with a, a theme that software engineering had run its course. Um, developing software needed more than just going to school, uh, studying, taking a training class. It required a little bit more than that. And he introduced the concept of uh, a craftsman. And he made the analogy that software developers um, need to pair up uh, with a journeyman and learn from them the same way other craft-based professions do. 
Anybody heard of Pete McGreen? Software craftsmanship book? Alright. So this book was not a big hit, uh, like the Gang of Four book. Pretty much went unnoticed in uh, 1990. It released it in about 2001. Pretty much went unnoticed. Um, <clears throat> that occurred, that happened in about 2008. Um, this is Robert Martin, otherwise known as Uncle Bob. He was giving the keynote address at the Agile Conference, 2008. He got on the podium and started his talk by going over the um, values of the Agile Manifesto. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. All right, these are the four values of the Agile Manifesto. And then Uncle Bob got on that stage and said, it is time to add a fifth value to the manifesto. And that value is software craftsmanship over craft. All right. That is the fifth value of the manifesto. And that created a huge buzz. He was on stage, there was a lot of entities, and everybody started talking, you know, what is software craftsmanship? What is Uncle Bob talking about? Um, why do we care about software craftsmanship over craft? A week later, um, he updated his uh, fifth value and said, "What I really, you know, I use the word craft for theatrical purposes. What I really meant is software craftsmanship over execution. Right? That is, most developers, most development teams execute, but they don't take care. Um, we value execution." but we value craftsmanship more. So this was in 2008. We are today in 2012, and the Agile Manifesto uh, was not amended. It still contains the same four values. So Uncle Bob, in essence, uh, you know, failed, but he got a lot of discussion going on. And what did happen is later that year, a group of aspiring software craftsmen got together and tried to address um, the problems they were facing and see what can they do um, to change how things were going. And they came up with what is known as the Manifesto of Software Craftsmanship. Okay? Um, this manifesto says not only working software but well-crafted software, not only <coughs> responding to change but also steady, steadily adding value, not only individuals and interactions but also a community of professionals, and not only customer collaboration, but also productive partnerships. So the items on the left are from the Agile Manifesto, the items on the right are from the Craftsmanship Manifesto. And they basically felt that they needed to make this manifesto to change the way things were heading. All right? And the reason they felt we got to the stage one of them was education. They felt going to school, getting a degree, studying, was not preparing people well enough to enter the workforce and know how to write good code. They would know how to program, but not necessarily know how to write good code. That was a problem. There was a gap between what was what's being taught in school and what is needed in the workforce. The other problem was Scrum. All right. A lot of the group blamed Scrum on the current state of where we are today in software development. Um, a lot of people were adopting Scrum. Uh, they're still, they still are adopting Scrum. But Scrum only addresses process and says nothing about technical practices. Right? Ken Schwaber, one of the creators of Scrum, said, you know, when, when we created Scrum, we made a major assumption that developers are smart enough to figure out the techniques that they need to make changes along the way and improve their processes. And then he said that assumption was fundamentally wrong. Developers were used to working in long cycles. They were used to waiting six months, nine months for the requirements. QA was used to wait one year or two years before they got anything to test. And now suddenly we're telling people, you have to do all this in a month or two weeks. And that is fundamentally hard to do, which doesn't happen just like that. 
Um, Uncle Bob was just upset with uh, keeping embarrassing ourselves in front of our clients, in front of our employers. He was upset in telling people, um, just reboot at night and everything will be okay in the morning, every night. And he was upset in seeing code that, you know, looked like this. So I know in the back, uh, you can't see, but that's not really the point here. <laughs> All right? This is um, a Java class. All right? And this is not a special effect. This is not, this is one class. And the scroll bar is all the way up here, and it's slowly moving down. And Uncle Bob was fed up in seeing code like that. And he said, we have to do something. Something needs to change. All right, so this goes for another two minutes. Um, but I think, I think you get the point. So we are going to move on. So what was going on is a big ball of mud is the most common approach to software development today. Um, and that's even when we're working on greenfield projects. But we have the hindsight of learning from what we did before. We, we say, this time we're going to do things better. We start out clean. And uh, three months later, six months later, we slowly find ourselves you know, sinking this big ball of mud. We find ourselves, you know, swimming in a uh, spaghetti coat and unable to untangle things from each other. And we reach out to our favorite tool in our toolbox. So Stephen's going to be talking later about toolbox, but in this case, our favorite tool is known as duct tape. We take out the duct tape, and we tape up one problem over here. We tape up another problem, and another one. And very slowly and quickly, actually, very quickly, our code from inside looks like spaghetti code, and our code from outside is all taped up and held very nicely together, but very um, fragile. And we find ourselves in a minefield. We don't want to make changes anymore. If we do, we're like walking, you know, very gingerly. We're tippy-toeing around and making sure we make a change and step quickly, step back, because we don't know what's going to happen. Things might just explode, and um, we just want to go and make that change and run away and never see that piece of code again. And that's that's where we end up. Um, but a lot of us need a product like this one, which is called Craft4j. So this is a real product that was released in the mid-2000s, uh, and that was the real low. And it basically, you plugged it into uh, you know, clips, and it gave you, it told you how crappy your code is. <laughs> uh, and CRAP was actually an acronym, and it stood for Change Risk Analyzer and Predictor. Okay. It basically told you how easy your code could change or not. And it was a variation of cyclomatic complexity and testing. So for those of you that are interested in the math, that was really the equation. But again, that's not really the point here. The point is that we actually needed a tool like that to tell us, hey, your code is scrappy. Um, let's fix it. Um, so this was a great tool, but the company kind of uh, didn't make it. But we have a lot of these tools now in other places that do very similar stuff with um, nicer names, let's put it this way, and a better logo. <laughs> um, but mostly, a lot of us think we are the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and not everybody, not everybody can pull this off, you know. I, I only know one person that can really pull this off and other amazing stuff, but um, we all think we can do the same thing, but that's not really true. 
So where does that put us today? It puts us in disciplines that are behind the software craftsmanship manifesto. A lot of it came up from the XP world. And a lot of it is going to be what we are going to be talking about today and practicing tomorrow. So test-driven development is a key, not only to ensure that we have tests and give us a safety net when we do want to make changes, but also to help us improve our design in the beginning from the first place. All right, so first key is test-driven development. Continuous integration, we're going to talk about that. I, I hope everybody in this room already has a continuous integration server set up. If not, I hope coming out of this conference, you will go back and start setting one up. Um, continuous integration is a key part that's going to allow us to make those changes and highlight problems early so that we can tackle them from the beginning. Fair programming is a key aspect in terms of collaboration. Whether you're physically pairing together for the whole day, for half a day, or for just two hours a day, we need to be pairing and showing our code and getting a second opinion of what we are doing and collaborating. Um, that has to be happening in some way or fashion. And all day tomorrow will be pair program. So we will be working with another pair, we will be rotating pairs, so we can get an idea and a feel of what that looks like. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing all day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, we should all have the attitude <coughs> that QA should find nothing. When we finish with our work, we should have pride in what we've developed, and not just pass the buck to QA. The goal of QA is to find nothing. Right. We should have that attitude and pride. From the manifesto, um, the key part of it was creating a community of professionals. Um, and that's what we're trying to do today. Uh, this is a, a low-key event. And the most important part of it is for us to network and solve uh, common problems we're facing. So that's why we have the open space. That's why the speakers are going to hang out together. It's about uh, caring, learning, and sharing from each other. So um, if you have a problem, raise it. And we'll have a session around it. Um, if you want to learn how to set something up, bring it up. And we'll have a discussion. And I hope um, you'll enjoy the rest of the day, because this is what we're going to be talking about. So as a quick intro, the rest of the day is going to be a lot more technical, and we're going to be covering all of these topics. Any questions? All right. Thank you very much. And we'll start out shortly with uh, Sam and Mike. They just need a couple of minutes to get set. Thank you.